Do you see your kilobytes increasing over there, Chris? I do. I see the kilobytes increasing. It's not a bird, it's not a plane, it's Superhero Slate. It's a modern podcast where we talk about everything that's great. Like movies, TV, superheroes. It's Superhero Slate. Hello everyone and welcome to Superhero Slate, the show where we run down the latest super entertainment news. We love TV, movies, and superheroes, so let's talk it all out. My name is Chris Champ Dillard. <laughs> and my name's Mike Royer. <laughs> well, we'll call you Whiskey. And okay. this is the Superhero Slate review for Kingsman the Golden Circle. That's right. I think we were talking uh, a little bit about this last week. This was, I think, the original Kingsman was the first first movie that we kind of mm-hmm. sort of reviewed for the superhero slate podcast so this is almost a little bit of an anniversary a little bit it's it's um it definitely i don't remember talking about the first kingsman with you but i definitely know we both have an affinity for it so that's that's good right we, we both <laughs> like it so yeah it was um to talk i guess a little bit about the first movie uh it was uh kind of out of nowhere it was based on a comic book that not a whole lot of people knew about uh, mm-hmm. uh, Matthew uh, Matthew Vaughn kind of came out of nowhere and made it into something that was just really extraordinary. Uh, Rated R kind of did what Deadpool did before Deadpool did it, like yep. a year ahead of time. Uh, it was a uh, was it February or maybe March release? I don't. Quite it, it was Valent- It was Valentine's Day weekend. Okay. Um, that's why. That's where Deadpool got it from. Because uh, Kingsman, um, although it is a, a based on a comic book from Marvel, um, Fox owns the rights to it because it's by Mark Millar, who is like their quote unquote their Zack Snyder or Joss Whedon of their their movie verse kind of uh-huh. uh, for for uh, X Men movies. And Matthew Vaughn has you know dabbled in several comic book movies before with X Men First Class and uh, Kick Ass, so definitely knew he was going to bring some action and. Um, you know, some I guess a little shock value to to the films. Yeah, I, I think you get that with that rated R rating mm-hmm. for sure. And also, Matthew Vaughn kind of brought out this kind of new way of filming action where I don't know necessarily how many cameras he puts in a scene to film it, but he kind of connects all of the cuts together with these sweeping motions. So it almost looks like you're seeing most of the scene from one camera, but it's very it's very energetic and yeah. you definitely get more of that through the second Kingsman. We, we we do. I think I think one thing to talk about, you know, Matthew Vaughn, the way he films his actions, most people would slow down the punches and mm-hmm. slow down the action. He actually speeds it up. Um, like he, he, he pushes things faster. So I think you get actually within like a three to five minute action scene, you get probably 10 minutes worth of somebody else's action scenes. So <laughs> it, it's very interesting and very, very kinetic is yeah. kind of what you said there. It almost feels like the next evolution of like the shaky cam. Mm-hmm. It makes me wonder if we're going to see any other directors kind of attempt something like this in the future. Cause it's definitely very Matthew Vaughn. Yeah. But, um, when we're, we're going to talk about the Kingsman, the golden circle here in a second, but, uh, you don't have to worry about spoilers here at the very beginning. We'll let you know when we jump into spoilers, but I think, up here up top we're just going to talk about kind of uh how we felt about the mm-hmm. movie initial impressions and then uh we're gonna like jump into the to the meat of this movie and just uh, talk it all out yeah yeah totally so uh for kingsman the golden circle i was lucky enough to get to see it uh, a day early for free uh at a special screening at a local theater uh, down in kentucky right down in louisville where <laughs> where the actual some of the movie takes place um, so that was really cool. Um, it, it's probably my least favorite theater in the area, but you know, <laughs> t- to see a day early for free, I'm like, you know, I'll, I'll suck it up. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I got to see it the next day at IMAX. Uh, but I, I've got to tell you, I could not wait to watch it the second time, Mike. I, I had such a great time with the Golden Circle, and I, I highly recommend everyone watch it if you like the first one. So I don't know. How do you feel? All right. I mean, I'm. I'm I mean, over here just kind of shaking my head. I I kind of am going the opposite direction. So this is really interesting. Um, I, I, I don't want to go ahead and jump down this movie's throat, but I would still recommend this movie, even if you haven't seen the first Kingsman movie. I think there's enough in here that's entertaining. There's awesome action. There's, you know, there's some funny bits here and there. Some of the gadgets are pretty cool. But overall, I thought this movie was stumbling over quite a few things, 
definitely when you compare it to the original. Um, I, don't, I wouldn't say the original was lightning in a bottle. I just thought they kind of hit on this cool idea of kind of making fun of spy movies, not really, not really spoof-wise, but kind of almost like lampooning the idea and like modernizing it a little bit. Um, but the the sequel was uh, it was a little rough for me. Oh man, um, that, that's it, so it was, sad to hear. <laughs> I know, and it's sad for me to say because I was really looking forward to this film. You know, um, he, I thought it kicked off really really well, and then it just kind of got a little meddled. Um, I, I wanted more from the statesmen. I, I wanted more from specific statesmen that we didn't get to see a whole lot of. Um, some of the some of the gadgets were a little um, un, unbelievable in my position. Uh, you know, they, you don't they believe kinda, a comic book movie, Mike. Uh, all right, so I, I gonna... knew this. I knew this was going to come up because this is always what happens. So uh, the first Kingsman did a really good job world building and kind of creating these uh, this believable environment. Of course, some of the gadgets and stuff that they're using and the scenarios that are playing out are just fantasy and would never happen. But it just it all felt very grounded. I, I could believe it. There's parts in this movie that it, I, I just don't feel like they're grounded in the world of the Kingsman. It felt like it was possibly coming from another movie. So I don't know if this is Matthew Vaughn trying to evolve the franchise into something else, but it was a direction that I didn't necessarily per- prefer. Um, there was definitely things that I liked. So I, I, I think if, when I say there's half of this movie that I liked and half of this movie that I didn't enjoy so much, it doesn't necessarily mean I'm giving it like a two and a half out of five or I'm giving it like a 50%, you know, <laughs> like that. It's, it, 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 it's not a failing movie. It's just... It's more decisive in my head <laughs> than it seems like it is for you. Oh yeah, I I love this movie. Uh, if you, I think this movie is for true fans of the first one, Mike. Um, and because you say the first one had world building, I don't think the first one had world building. I think the first one introduces to the characters, and this one, um, so like you know, it was just kind of set in England. It had worldwide you know problems, but it was set in England for the most part. Um, because you just you just had the Kingsman, and this took it to the county level, I guess. So you meet the statesman, but we don't need the statesman to work go forward because it's still a Kingsman story. But the th- the inevitable third one, of course, um, will I think you know bring those two together even closer. And we'll talk about that in spoilers about why that kind of happened. Uh, but I think you know this one just it, it cranks everything up a little bit. Uh, it, it, it to me if it. it I don't. I'm not a big fan of James Bond movies, and in in retrospect, I'm not a big fan of Austin Powers movies. But I think this fits right in the middle of those two. Um, so it's either gonna. I, like I saw an article earlier said that Kingsman is either gonna make or break James Bond movies because uh-huh. because it's just it's it's I guess a Roger Moore like a wink to the camera kind of thing. And and now while there aren't a, a lot of you know um, there are there are a couple. I, there are a couple of scenes I'm like, we need answers here, but I love how it builds on the first one. I'm going to have to go against you and say you have to watch the first one to understand where this one is <laughs> and the characters well, involved. So, Well, I think we can talk about this yeah. when we get into spoilers, which I think we need to do soon, but I don't think they did a good job at all addressing what happened in the first movie, and uh, I, I just I want to get into it right now, so maybe we should just uh, all right. uh, put... Uh, put up the uh, the the spoiler notification. We, well, definitely will. So, but first, I mean, so would you? I guess before we that, would you? If someone hadn't seen this yet and don't want to spoil, you would recommend them to see, it or you wouldn't recommend them? Yeah, because okay. I st- I still think at a certain level this is a this is a competent film with fun stuff in it. Like I, it's n- it's not gonna feel like you wasted money going to see this movie. There's a good chance you might be like my co-host here, Chris, and and love the movie. And you, you know, even if you you do, you don't buy into it, there's still some cool stuff to see. Okay, yeah, I definitely say um, if you like the first one, you're going to like this one. If you don't like the first Kingsman, and I recommend you watch it, then you will not like this. I think yeah. it'll it'll ex- exponential. It'll go either way for you. It's just gonna yeah. make it worse or, or better. So yeah, my my wife wasn't a huge fan of the first film, uh, so I, I I went to this one without her. I, I wasn't like the, you know you're gonna definitely getting more of the same with this sequel. So it's like yeah, I'm not gonna bring my wife again if she didn't like the first one. Okay, so there we go. You've got it from us. Now we're gonna ruin the shit out of this movie for you if you've not seen it. So <laughs> yes. uh, earmuffs or turn it off whatever you do unless you've seen it we're going into spoilers mike all right let's lay down here we go here we go Uh, i think one of the biggest flaws with this movie is they do not address any of the world 
shaking things that happened in the first movie, and it kind of really upset me. Um, we have this this whole worldwide plan um, by Samuel L. Jackson to make, the, yep. to, make, to make everybody like kill each other. You know, people are fighting, they're mauling each other. Uh, the Kingsmen are, you know, in the eleventh hour trying to stop the world from falling apart. We see specific scenes where, like, Eggsy's mother is attacking, mm -hmm. trying to kill her own child with like a kitchen knife, and she's like trying to like cut the door down she's like smashing through it like the shining trying to kill this crying baby and the only thing that was stopping her was a door so you know there's other people on earth that had like mauled each other and killed each other and pulled each other apart that doesn't come up at all in this sequel there's no sort of ramifications from uh, valentine's plan that shows up he's slightly mentioned by uh was it julie julianne moore yeah, yeah julianne uh, moore's character poppy yeah, she she kind of mentions like in the confusion she was able to kidnap Elton John, and then we <laughs> yeah. see Valentine um, shoot um, in a flashback. We see him um, Harry. Uh, we, yeah, we see him. I'm trying to remember all the characters' names as opposed to the actors' names right now. Yeah, Harry um, or the original Agent Galahad, if you will. Yeah, or Colin Firth, whatever you want to call him. So that doesn't really pop up again, which I thought was c kind of a shame. I was kind of hoping they would keep building on that so we could see what happened you know we see these characters return they actually did something really cool where they subverted the trope of kind of like the bond girl i thought it was hilarious that he was still dating that princess that he mm -hmm. saved at the end of the movie like that was a really smart decision like they totally could have just not put her in this movie and no one would have batted an eye or thought well, anything different of it so, so i really love that he was still with her so the beginning of the movie i think the first act of this film is essentially you have to watch the first one to understand the first act of kingsman 2 because i watching all the trailers i had no idea that the guy with the metal arm was actually one of his train like fellow yeah. agents from the first movie and i thought that was a really cool carryover like okay he didn't die but now he's like yeah I'm, I'm we're exacting kind of a revenge kind of thing here yeah i can't believe no one caught that i mean all they had to do was shave the guy's head and <laughs> uh, and put him in the trailers and no one even noticed him. He, he, he shaved his head grew a little stubble and he looked more jacked than he did in the first one yeah but i thought he was a really cool you know throwback from the first one um, watching the movie multiple times, I was actually able to catch more details the second time around. Uh, the movie actually opens with John Denver's uh, song, um, Country Roads, Take Me Home Country Roads, uh, played on bagpipes, which is a throw, I guess, forward to um, whenever we get to see, I, I, I forget his name now, um, Merlin, Merlin's death, whenever he's singing the song later on. Because that's like a trope that carries over through the, through like, or not a trope, a theme. That carries over is his love of John Denver, um, but yeah, I, I I had such a good time. I I enjoyed. I does this take place? Was it a year after a year after the first movie? I believe I, it is. I, I don't recall seeing a, a any sort of like time uh, put well, up on the screen, but it's it can't be it, that it, far apart. It, it does because of, of when they do the flashback to when Harry gets shot. They were like ten months earlier, or twelve months earlier, or a year. Oh, earlier. did it say that? Okay, yeah. so yeah, we're, we're roughly working with a year. So 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 why couldn't they have addressed anything that had happened that Valentine did? Because I'm gonna put this on the same level as James Bond or or even Austin. Pa the, the spy movies don't have to acknowledge. This big world of continuity. Yes, like the characters are there, but like, who knows how crazy this world? Enough that they can put these citizens in cages in football centers, and no yeah. one happens I, to notice it. Like, it's I okay they, because it's it's taking itself fun. It's huge, and it's not real. And and I think they have. I think they have to though, because I mean, when you're when you're connecting this movie so heavily to the first movie with like characters coming back from the dead, killing off characters, continuing characters, this movie is like constantly like reminding you of the first Kingsman film. So it's just like, well, yeah, I'm gonna think about the other evil plot that had happened so i think they they do need to do it and, and also especially in this climate of like franchise and i'm not saying they need to build this this huge uh kingsman universe but it's just like hey at least address this like global crisis that happened in the first movie even just a little bit i i thought like it would have been cool if like what if julianne moore you know poppy said like her her sales 
dramatically increased after that because maybe people were coping with all this anxiety and just this craziness that had happened so maybe they were like smoking like more weed just to kind of like chill out because they almost tried to kill their friend or kill their kid or something that would have been just like an easy like almost like an easy single throwaway line just to kind of deal with that but like i just wish it would have been addressed in some way uh, see I'm, I'm i'm again i'm on the other side of the fence like if they would have leaned on that too heavy it i think it would have torn it down quite a bit because this is a two and a half hour movie and it, it, it throws a lot at you in two and a half hours like by the time you get to the lepidopterist hair version of harry to his like resurrection and then trying to like to the end it's, it's quite a bit quite a bit going on i I don't think I think the throwaway line was great because, again, in the first Kingsman and as we see in this one, they save the world but they don't get the front page of the paper. Um, so who knows how they shoved that under the rug? And we saw this crazy ass president who was like, "Ha ha, got that son of a bitch because she's gonna fall for my, you know, signing these papers kind of thing." It's it, it's a fucked up world in this in this in this universe, and and I kind of enjoy that they just they. They they satirize everything. They don't have to. Rel- I don't. I don't need the Marvel connected universe. I don't need the DC universe in this. I'm fine with them not doing it. So I think you know that's one area where we're gonna probably you know disagree at. Yeah. Well, we'll just have to move forward and yeah. just talk about. Uh, let's just talk about uh, this unnecessary amnesia plotline that I really hated when it came to Harry. It's just like I feel like any time you bring up any sort of amnesia, lost memory, in any TV. A show, any movie, any soap opera, it's just, it's not gonna go well. I just feel like unless you're crafting a whole film around it, like Memento or something like that, it's just, you're not gonna have a good time. So it's just like, they finally find Harry and then, oh, he doesn't know who he is. So it's just like, you instantly know, like, one of two things is gonna happen. The most likely is... He somehow, through through some sort of grandiose gesture, uh, is going to get all of his memories uh, flooding back because it's not like they're going to trickle the memories back into him. That's too boring for a movie. Um, or he's just never going to get his memory back and he's just going to become a new character and they're not going to do that. So basically through like the second act of this movie, I'm just kind of just like, come on, just get your freaking memories back. I don't care what traumatic experience you have to relive. You know, I don't want to wait like 10 minutes of screen time for you to be back to being like a Kingsman again. It was just, I hated the amnesia plot line and I, and I, I love Colin Firth. I loved his character, but it just felt so forced to bring him back. Like the whole time it felt like, when they made the first Kingsman, they just never knew that it was going to be successful. They never knew it was going to get a sequel. So they, they killed him off in a, in a really kind of spectacular fashion, you know, doing the whole Kingsman subverting the trope thing where he did had that awesome fight scene uh, to Freebird in that church, which was amazing. And I love that scene. And it's actually like Family Guy has parodied that scene already. It's all it's already to the level of being parodied. And then as soon as he like vanquishes all those people and steps out of that church, bam, he gets shot right in the head by the bad guy. Like that was a big deal. That was a huge moment in the movie. That's a moment that leaves you gasping. And then they're left with crap. How do we bring them back to life? Let's invent some sort of goo that brings them back. But that's not very believable. So let's give them amnesia. So it's not so crazy. So I just, I, I could not buy into anything that surrounded bringing him back to life. Well, I mean, I, again, I, I don't think that you really care for this universe. Because you want, you say you want to throw back to the old, but you don't want it to be connected. I, I think it's fine. Again, this is a spy movie where James Bond has gadgets and stuff and everything can just happen because they have it and the king the statesmen who are you know the american intelligence agency has a has this goo and they use it twice uh to to do it and it makes sense that it was in a cowboy hat as well because like you get shot in the head your, your cowboy hat could you know become the thing I, I you know it may be the slowest part of the movie I'll, I'll give you that but is it bad no i mean they set it up that it's not because he has amnesia because he's just not remembering that they can bring anyone back as long as they can shock it back into him they have the picture for whiskey that snaps him right back almost instantly but they didn't know who this guy was so they couldn't bring him back right away yeah but i think this just kind of goes into the theme of like death has no weight in these movies anymore because i mean when you can clearly bring someone back from the dead from being being shot in the head you kind of are losing the stakes like you literally if you want some if you want us to believe that someone is dead in this movie now you have to blow them up like they had to bl- they had to blow up merlin for us to believe that he actually sacrificed himself but what i learned <laughs> this weekend when I was uh, looking up this movie is I guess um, 
uh, Mark Strong, uh, the guy who played Merlin, he was on set at the end of the film for that wedding scene, and I guess he was wearing, like, green socks or something. So they were going to bring him back, too, with robot legs. So huh. it's like no one can die in this movie anymore, and I feel like it just it lowers the stakes because I can't believe anyone's dead. Like, how, how do you think um, his uh, female Kingsman agent, what was her oh, name, like Roxy, Roxy or something? I don't do think, you, I think Roxy had enough time to get out of, yeah, of I don't the think thing. She, yeah. Yeah, I don't think she's dead either. So it's just like I'm watching this awesome like kick-ass like rated R action movie, watching people get cut in half, get thrown in the meat grinders, but when someone gets shot in the head, I'm just like, "Oh, they might not be dead." It's just it's hard for me to it's really hard for me to invest in what's well, going on. I, again, when I know I, no one can die. I think you 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 you're not grasping the extravagance of this movie. Like it doesn't matter. None of this needs to be real. It's a spy movie where anything can happen. If people come back like much like his uh, buddy from the first movie, whose head didn't blow up, but his arm blew up because he was shocked. Great, so be it. If they want to bring people back, again, that's what James Bond and those spy movies do. This this kind of does that, and it, it's fun. It's it's It doesn't have to make sense. If they come back, they can come back as evil people. They can come back as whatever they forgot they were. I don't care. Uh, I'm not looking for stakes. I'm looking to sit back and just enjoy this film. And I, it does bring... Yeah, you know, there are, again... The, the uh, amnesia part is very slow, but, I mean, I'm not going to nitpick it apart like that. Like, oh, well, I don't believe it. You know, he's he's not dead. Well, we have this Julianne Moore's Poppy version who built Poppy Land in these undiscovered ruins running a drug trade, like the biggest drug trade in the world. There's a lot of stuff to not believe in here, and, and it's fine. But well, I'm, I, I'm not putting I, that weight. Like you, you seem to be putting all this weight on this movie, and there's, there, there doesn't need to be any weight. I'm, gonna, I'm well, gonna pull it back a little bit because I mean, all the fight scenes, all the stuff they do, all the action. Like if you believe it, like oh, that's not real. That donut would never. They fall over. Like the baseball grenade would never work. Stuff like that. That's fine. But I mean, no, it, it's just all with. It's just all within reason. And I think what is believable with with what they set up. I mean, it's actually very believable that Julianne Moore's character would kind of just build build this weird lair. I actually thought it was actually really clever. Like what happens when like the the richest, most successful business person on the planet just can't basically kind of come out of hiding because it's all with illegal drugs so it's like yeah you got to do what you got to do you got to bring the comforts of home kind of to your lair i thought that was okay because it was kind of on par with what happened in the first movie where valentine's lair was like literally like in a in like a mountain like it was like a mountain hideout like you know that's pretty like villainous so I, it wasn't totally unbelievable for me to, to see these like 1950s well, things on her thing but it's just like now she has fully cybernetic robots Bot CG dogs mm -hmm. like that is a that is a huge leap. I I could totally buy into uh, the bad guy henchman having a robot arm because you know that's ju that's just a little bit that's not even f much of a, far from a leap. Like we we kind of have robot arms for people right now, but it's just like we're gonna extrapolate that to like robot dogs. Like that's a huge jump. We didn't have any like that's almost like you're getting like into like science fiction almost. They're like. Where's the scientist that she has that's building all this robot stuff? Like, I get why, that she has, why do, like, why tons do you, of Why money. do you need an explanation for all this? I mean, it doesn't matter. She has a robot person who's giving golden tattoos to people. It's whatever. It's poppy land. She, can, she has all the money. She can buy anything she wants. She's got all these drug things throughout the world where she's building the antidotes. I, it's fine. I mean, it, you're trying... I think you're adding too much weight and trying to make it too real and finding these backstories and... I just want to see more Poppy. I'm I'm sad she's dead, like from a drug overdose. Because did you notice her dogs were named Benny and Jet from Benny and the Jets because she's such an <laughs> Elton John fan? Like the, yeah, yes, Elton John that. was one of the funniest parts of this movie, and, and he wasn't just a cameo. I think he had more screen time than Jeff Bridges' <laughs> Statesman did. Because so this is this is probably another thing that you're not gonna like me about. I liked his cameo too, but I thought he overstayed his welcome. Like, I, th I thought he was a fun character, like, oh, she kidnapped Elton John, that's funny, she's making him play the piano, and I thought he might have, like, a little scene where he escapes, but, like, really, he's doing, like, kung fu flips, and he's, like, kicking a henchman on stage, like, doing, like, flying crane kicks and stuff, I'm like, what is going on? This movie has, like, just lost all, all basis, like, towards this third act of the movie, it just went to an area where it's just, like, they've, they've kind of left any sort of, like, uh, like, uh, realm of, 
I don't want to say realism because like because uh, these movies don't have to be real, but like they just went over the top. And I guess if this is the direction that they're going, you know, just go ahead and lean into it if that's the way you want to take the franchise. But it's kind of similar to like what happened with the Fast and the Furious movies. Like yes, these these in the first Fast and the Furious movie, these cars can't do these like super elaborate jumps, you know, um, off the road, you know, cause the cars would crumble once they land, but you get it. You're watching like, you know, a car racing movie with like nitrous and stuff, but it totally like goes into a whole new realm with like these new Fast and the Furious movies. So that, that's what, that's the way I'm trying to describe it. Of course, these cars can't do these things, but you know, there's a, there's a line there that, that you cross eventually. So if this is where the franchise is going, I don't hate it, but there's just there's a total difference in the first movie and the second movie when it comes to what they're willing to do with these gadgets and where they're taking the franchise. So it sounds like it's working out really well for you, just not for me. Well, well I mean, again, to me, this doubles down on the first one. Like, you're getting more slick action. I think we got more fight scenes similar to just the bar scene in the first one and, and I guess the final fight scene with um, Gazelle in, in the first one. Because we had a, a throwback to the bar scene, which was very confusing. Because was Whiskey fighting fellow statesmen or just random bar people? Because he, yeah, he did I reference them as the, someone else, like a code. That was very confusing to me. Yeah, That's and it one just thing. It, and it felt like a moment where they're like, let's try to recreate something that happened in the first movie. Which actually, I was kind of glad that they didn't do exactly what they did in the first movie. I was like, okay, here goes Colin Firth. He's locking the door again. Yeah. He's just going to kick some more butts so we know he's back in action. And then he totally miffs that uh, mug throw and then he gets punched in the face. And I was like, okay, that's pretty funny. I like that. Yeah, so there's that. I mean, like, there are a lot of callbacks to the first movie. And even. I just like all the action. I like the the humor. I like that it doesn't take itself seriously. This is the spy genre riffs. What I, I again, I don't want to watch James Bond. I want to watch the Kingsman version because it's like a comic book version of a movie where they're like, okay, we're going, we're gonna satire everything, but we don't have to follow any sort of rules or or, or world building or anything like that. We can just go balls to the wall and have a good time with it. And well, the thing it, is that I think the first movie takes its more takes itself more seriously than you might remember. I mean, there was some like they were hitting on some strong themes of like Eggsy kind of becoming like a fully rounded person where he doesn't really have any arc in this movie. He's just kind of like running around having a good time. Like in the first movie, like we see Eggsy, he's like in this in these like kind of struggling projects. Like he's got like a shitty stepdad. I don't remember it, or like his mom's boyfriend. I don't remember if they were married or not, but he was like an asshole. Like he was just this criminal running around doing nothing and then Colin Firth kind of steps in as this dad character you know and becomes like this icon for him and he really looks up to him which makes it even a bigger deal when Colin Firth is shot and killed you know uh, you know it's, it's there's actually kind of a lot of serious stuff happening in the movie and it kind of plays really nicely with the really weird character that Valentine is and I also like how they all these vil villains are really weird. They're just these kind of bizarre kind of mustache twirling things that you, you might see out of a cartoon. But I feel like if you're bringing those elements in as a cartoon, kind of the other stuff around them needs to be balanced a little bit more. But yeah, I think the first movie is not so fun and and whimsical as maybe you remember it. At. I mean, I, I watched it Tuesday. So yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm very familiar with, with, with what it is. But I mean, it's... It, it doesn't, again, it's all, you know, parodies of, or satire on the spy genre, and that's fine. I mean, I, I'm not looking for this movie to make sense and take take itself seriously, and, and it sounds like that's what you were looking for from this. So, I, to me, I really had a good time. It's like, again, second time, I could watch it a third time and be very, very content with myself, because the second time I did see more stuff. One of his magazines, actually, on his wall, of the three magazines, is... Um, when Elton John goes missing, by the way. Uh, yeah, I saw that. So, like so, that. so that comes back to that. Uh, I mean, this dealt with you know, like, I mean, not directly, but like the corrupt government. Who, who in the world of drug using is actually at fault here? Are is, you know, are they all criminals? Which he didn't speak. He spoke for America, but not the world. Like you know, there's recreational drug use legal in other countries. He, I thought, I thought the whole drug plot was interesting. You know, I could feel like on paper. Or somebody pitching it in a room it does sound like an interesting idea for a villain to take advantage of i just don't think it was executed super well i mean they, they say like oh what are they gonna do poison our own supply and she's like well yeah kind of uh because i mean all she want all she wanted was validation that she was a good business person like she wasn't trying to 
take over the world or be king of the world. She even wanted to be taxed on her drug, you know, cartel. Like she asked for mm-hmm. it. So I think she she was she wasn't asking for the keys to the world. She just wanted to be taken as a serious person, despite her her mental illnesses. Uh, <laughs> now I would like to see more of maybe her background. I know we didn't get a lot of Valentine's background, but like what made her have an affinity for the 1950s? Um, oh. And then you know she did, she did feed a hamburger of, of a person to somebody else, which a lot <laughs> of people in the theater the first time were like very very uncomfortable with. Uh, more so than the controversial sex scene. I'm using air quotes here. <laughs> oh my god! Let's talk. About, let's talk about that because that I have. It, it, I have a weird. It, I love that they went there because that's kind of the one thing I like about Kingsman, where they'll kind of push the envelopes in some respects, and they definitely pushed it in that scene because you start to see that hand slowly go down, and you're just like, oh, they're gonna cut. Oh, they're gonna cut. Oh, they're not cutting. Oh, they're gonna cut. They're not cutting. <laughs> they're not cutting. <laughs> Oh, oh, no, oh, they're we, zooming in. Oh, oh, oh no. my God. <laughs> yeah. We are CG inside. Yeah. Uh, so I can't even imagine what that was like in IMAX, but I don't know if there's ever been that much of a close-up of a crotch before. So yeah. So that was a first. Yeah, that was definitely, I mean, again, people had issues with, with the the um, the anal sex joke in the first one, which they called back twice on this one. Even Elton John <laughs> had a throwback to that one. Oh, yeah, backstage passes. Backstage <laughs> passes. Um, you know, one of the things that they didn't answer to me, I mean, I, I know Mike, Mike hasn't said many good things about this movie just yet. The one thing I will say that I didn't <laughs> care for is like when he's at dinner and he's like, put it fucking down. They never answered how her parents reacted to that. Uh, yeah. cause they just cut to the devastation that, you know, he was, it was Kingsman. Um, but that's there. Uh, also most of the people in quote unquote Louisville, Kentucky probably fit the, the, the persona of that, of the people they saw there. <laughs> as long as you're outside of the city, that's kind of what they are. That's exactly what the distilleries look like as well. Like okay. the tours and stuff. So they, gotcha. they nailed that pretty well. Uh, um, I w- okay, Chris, let me say some things I liked about this movie. Cause like I said, at the, at you're the time, recommending like to people, the- but you haven't said anything that they should enjoy right. yet. So let's, let's Here hear we it. Go. The, my favorite character in this movie by far is Pedro Pascal as Whiskey. I freaking love this dude. I know his agenda is kind of maybe a little confusing to follow, but man, I love his character. He is so smooth. He is like the perfect cowboy. He has like the awesome like um, equivalent of like American Kingsman stuff. He's got the whip. He's got the lasso. Like all that stuff is like so freaking cool. Like I loved his character. He like walks circles around Channing Tatum. I don't know if it was a um I don't know if it was a conscious decision to literally put Channing Tatum on ice and kind of save him for like, you know, the possibly possibly <laughs> the third the He, he third did movie. have some good dancing moves. But, but man, Channing, T- Channing Tatum's uh southern accent is just atrocious. I don't know what he's trying to do. I'd rather him just talk like normal Channing Tatum. I could I could not like uh, like I don't know what he was doing. So I hope maybe he finds a way to turn that around for the third movie. But man, Pedro Pascal, whoo, he was killing mm-hmm. it. I'm so sad that he got turned into hamburger. Yeah, yeah, he he did he did end up with a the tragic uh ending and someone was like oh i don't like that they killed him he was just trying to revenge his wife like yeah but he was trying to kill them too so i mean uh yeah i agree he was good i i enjoyed i enjoyed the statesman for what little bit they were in here um especially you know jeff bridges is playing good old country boy champ uh that was that was really fun. I, i'm looking i think this movie is the stepping stone to them working together more because they didn't know about each other until this mm-hmm. movie so i'm looking forward to the third one like yes we have like 14 billion dollars of alcohol money in an intelligence agency what 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 have they become since then uh, definitely looking forward to that one as well so i agree yeah what else do you like let's see here what else i like uh i'm no i know i know i was kind of crushing on these robot dogs but i did like the robot hand i thought that was like a cool way to take the franchise and like yeah let's bring in some robotics and stuff and uh bring the henchmen back um, what what was his what was his name again? Charlie, I think it was. Yeah, his name? I think Charlie. Yeah, 
Yeah, I, I, I like that robot hand. I mean, that was cool to see the things he could do with it. It felt very henchman, and, like, I like seeing Eggsy trying to fight it. Like, the gra the grappling kind of feature of it worked really well with Matthew Vaughn's uh, choreo action choreography. Mm -hmm. And we got to see a lot of a lot of that in the trailer ahead of time, so I kind of knew what we were getting into. Um, I love the opening action sequence because it just, like, it was unrelenting. I loved them fighting inside of that, that cab. It was a little hard to follow. I think it was maybe because it was a confined space. Um, but, it, I, you know, I, I could figure out what was going on. And um, I love that part. Like, we also see in the trailer where he flies up, you know, over. above the car. Mm -hmm. and, and that's such a sick shot. And then just when you think the scene is over, when, you know, the car kind of slams on its brakes and, and the guy just, like, flies through the windshield. And, and so does the driver, that poor cab driver. Yeah. I thought maybe there there could be a little remorse for that guy. He's just, probably, like, he's probably actually dead, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's dead for sure. Um, and then Eggsy gets in it, and then it's like a high-speed car chase, and the car, like, transforms. And I was like, oh, man, that's cool. You know, we're getting, like, these uh, spy gadgets. You know, we have seen cars, like, transform before. I, I wasn't totally on board with it turning into an amphibious vehicle, but I did like how he said, you know I don't have a windshield right now, right? So yeah. and he's like, oh, well, I know you are good at holding your breath. So I was like, oh, yeah, I think, you know, I'm okay with all of that. And Mer Merlin, uh, that Merlin's whole point was to just tell him to remember his training every – every 20 minutes or so if i remember yeah, correctly um he's like remember your training you hold your breath remember your training don't get emotional and yeah so uh, that was fun um i i like the 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 fight the multiple fight scenes at poppy's base at the end um i think oh yeah that was good um seeing a suitcase turned into a body shield was really oh that was cool like yeah we've seen harry have his umbrella right so great so how do we how do we make eggsy have his own thing well, it's a briefcase. It's a missile launcher, a machine gun, and a shield. So yeah, and that was cool. And I think, I mean, maybe you can say because you saw it for a second time. I feel like that shield unwrapping might have been a practical effect or something, or at least it was very believable in the sense that it could just kind of yeah. fold out into armor. It, like that was that was really cool. It, it's hard to tell because it's all on um, that really weird black and like it's got little dots all over it pattern. So it, it could have been mm -hmm. easy to mask, but. That I mean, that was that seeing those two work together. Harry used the umbrella, like get the machine gun, put the scissors through the people. Like it was, I mean, that whole the poppy base fights were awesome, and including whenever they had to fight whiskey uh, in in the in the um, mm -hmm. I guess the fifties diner. If you will. Oh yeah, that was that was cool, and actually they did a good job making me forget that whiskey was on his way in the Silver Pony. Like I thought, like the movie was uh, wrapping up when they took care of Poppy, and I was just like, oh, and then whiskey shows up. I was like, oh shit, I forgot this guy was on his way. Uh, so I, you know, I thought that was pretty cool. Um, oh, man, what else did I like about this movie? Um, I mean, all all the all the characters are pretty solid, except for. You know, maybe some of the statesmen, but that could possibly because they didn't get a whole lot of screen time. I read somewhere that there's a supposedly like a three and a half hour cut of this film. So oh. uh, maybe there's going to be like an extended version that we can like pick up and maybe yeah. see uh, some things that felt like they were left out. Like did I did. I did notice that? some of the trailer stuff was missing in this one. Oh, what was missing from the trailer? So in the R-rated trailer, uh, Eggsy's like, oh, that's very American of you. And Shane's like, fuck yeah. And, like, that whole scene... So, whatever they were looking at in there, like, when Chaintain introduced them to, like, the statesman was not there. Uh -huh. So, we don't even and know what also, they have. <laughs> yeah. There, there's a moment in that flashback where they save Harry, where Channing Tatum, like, vocally says, I'm going to go check out the inside of the church. I bet there's a whole scene in there where he's probably looking around and going, oh, my God, this dude <laughs> just, like, massacred this entire church. He's the only one left alive. Let's take him back to the king. Let's take him back to the statesman headquarters, but lock him up. We don't know what he's capable of. Mm -hmm. So I would imagine maybe there's some motivation there of maybe not just kind of letting him go and keeping him locked up. Uh, so I, yeah, yeah, that aftermath would have been crazy to watch. There, there's into. probably some explanation of why Halle Berry's character was always voted no by Whiskey to be an uh -huh. agent because. There was something there weird between them and, and why she wanted to be an agent. I don't really know. Like, they just kind of... Yeah. She's like, I want to be an agent. And everyone's like, well, have you asked? Yeah. Well, I mean, it kind of... It, it made sense for a, a bit because we thought he was a double agent and we thought he was working for Poppy. But I guess at the end of the day, he was still a statesman, but he just kind of wanted to see the evil person's plan through just kind of unintentionally uh, just because he doesn't like 
drug users also. So I guess he was still a good guy. Just Which, with, meth just was not one of the poison drugs that she mentioned in her list of drugs. Oh, he should have been paying attention. Yeah, so, so, so meth head junkies still exist out there. Even. Yeah, so it's just like, why was, you know, was Whiskey always a bad guy trying to keep... Because maybe he thought an intelligence officer moving up into the field would kind of uncover his secrets or something. Mm -hmm. I don't really know what was going on there. And then also, he seems to get his memory back very quickly with that picture of his wife. So I'm guessing maybe he's been shot in the head a couple of times now. Well, I think... So maybe, I think, maybe they find out that that picture just is the best and it works the best for well, him. Well, going back to to what we said earlier, like, you know, we they don't know... They didn't know who Harry was for 10 to 12 months. Um, so they couldn't bring him back right away. So they probably like, oh, if we have some way, you know, to shock him, they're like, okay, his wife. Yeah. So probably yes, and they probably know, but since they didn't know Harry, they just had to wait and let him draw butterflies on the walls for for a very long time. Um, hopefully, I mean, I hope that doesn't come back. That was kind of that was kind of annoying. We kept seeing butterflies and like you know, like you said, it's standard trope that that keeps coming back. Oh, the amnesia person is not well right away, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean. It was it was fun that like was was he really going crazy like you don't know if Harry was all there or not they they kind of lead you along a little bit like is he crazy did he just shoot whiskey because he's he's not right in the head or is he still all there from from his Kingsman days so yeah um so what about that uh that snowy mountain scene mm -hmm. uh that almost felt like it could have been entirely removed from the movie I don't know exactly what we got out of that except for maybe trying to think that whiskey had an alternate agenda because uh the henchman charlie just ends up blowing it up i don't really know why he blew it up i don't know what well, the motivation be, be, was to because, destroying all those because a the the, the kingsman slash statesman now knew where the, the antidote was so they could go steal a vial of it and so, stop the whole plan he's also pissed off at his girlfriend uh, because because <laughs> of Glastonbury, yeah. What happens in Italy stays in Italy. Yeah, but but it's, it was to said. prevent the antidote from getting in the hands of the Kingsmen and Statesmen and just releasing their own quickly. Yeah, I mean, I guess if they wanted to wanted to make the movie a little bit more snappy, maybe they could have took that out mm -hmm. and put some of the other stuff in. But um, well, I did I did yeah. enjoy the old people. <laughs> He's like, that's the <laughs> that's am, the best shit I've had in three weeks. Yeah, so th there's. Well, there are still good things in this movie. I'm not a totally heartless person that can't go to the movie. Oh, I'm a heartless time. person because I think that's why I enjoyed <laughs> it so much is because I'm like, I, I this is this is just fun. Like, I just had so much fun. And my, my wife would agree. My wife actually really enjoyed it as well. So, but yeah, Mike, I don't, I don't blame you for not liking it. If you look up the reviews right now, it's at 50%. Like, you're either yes or no on this. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like, like there are people who are like, oh man, they're already out of tricks in this one, or it's campy and it's lazy. And other people are like, oh man, this is awesome. If you like the first one and it's 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 inventive and it's got crazy action and it's fun, you're gonna like it. Like there are both spectrums out there. So I yeah, I well, think if you really like like I we have such an affinity for the first one in, in this house. Like probably more than we really should. Um, I mean, that, I, that first one is still a, a great movie, and I guess, you know, it, they, there is only that, like, kind of one comic book trade out there that that movie it, went off of, it's, and it's, it kind it, of didn't the, even really yeah. follow it very well. I don't recommend so, that to anybody. If you want to, so like, like, know The Kingsman, don't don't read it. Yeah, so it's like one of those scenarios where where the movie version is better than the better than what it's adapted from. So that's kind of fun and interesting. Uh -huh. I think you told I think you told us on our uh, normal news episodes maybe uh, a few months back that I, aren't they kicking the comic book back into gear? Yeah, there is a a, a, a Kingsman, but it's got a different subtitle, kind of like how James Bond movies had different subtitles. Mm -hmm. It's like that. It's not it's not a comic book version of Kingsman two. It's just another Kingsman story in the Kingsman comic book universe. Cool. Um, so it, it definitely is coming back, and they're, they're they're writing more because of the popularity of it. And and I definitely, to me, I don't know how much money this makes. I'm going to pull up Box Office Mojo real quick. But I think it definitely needs a sequel to capitalize on kind of what you talked about. Like, why are the statesmen not used as much? I want to see more of the state. I want to see them work together more and see what that looks like, you know, in, in a couple of years. But... Um, maybe maybe have some other thing where the world isn't trying to kill itself or dying. Um, <laughs> maybe something a little different. I don't know. Yeah. So yeah, you can only totally dismantle the Kingsmen so many times. Like, yeah. Because they literally did that like twice. And they keep replacing so. them with old people somehow. I don't know. Like I, I imagine there've been more young people after after the first one. So. 
Yeah, so I mean, I mean, overall, just to kind of wrap things up, yeah, there are some things that kind of got up my craw uh, with this with this film, but I think I would still recommend this movie. There's still tons of stuff to have a good time in there. I think I'm just kind of upset because you know I was kind of let down. I kind of had higher expectations for this movie because I had such a good time with the first one. Mm-hmm. Didn't really live up to it, so kind of bummed out. There are some cool new characters. Some old characters I liked, unfortunately, they killed them all. They so might come back, Mike. You, ha- you cross your fingers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. So I don't know. It's weird. Like I don't really, I don't really rate movies. I'm not gonna put it on like a scale, but I would still, I wouldn't say shy away from the theater. You know, go see this one. It, it's fun. Yeah, and I would actually. I saw it in IMAX the second day. The sound is much better in IMAX than a normal theater. Like, it, right. to be honest, like, if you have the choice, the IMAX sound blew me away compared to an orig- a regular theater sound system. Um, so, on that note, I'm a little more solid on, on my standings on this. Um, I like it just as much, if not as equal as the first movie, um, in my in my opinion. And I would recommend go seeing it in theaters just as, just as much as Mike does. And um, I, I cannot wait to, to, to bring this home, really. Because I, I had I, I took I took the owner of the comic book store with me on Wednesday, my wife the second day, and everyone like everyone was just so happy to watch it, and I think that was also a little infectious for me. Like everyone's like, "Yeah, we're having good comic book movies for once. Like we don't have to worry about bad ones right now." Because we just came off seeing it in humans, Mike. I needed I needed to pick me up, so so that's good. So uh, yeah, so I guess that's our that's our reviews. We recommended it, so people go watch it, check it out. Emails yeah. your reviews if you want to, or your thoughts, or maybe your favorite parts, maybe your favorite Elton John part. There are several to choose from. That's for sure. <laughs> yes, maybe maybe one too many. <laughs> so uh, I think it's just right. Um, get your best self some backstage passes. But Mike, if people want to know what you're up to, where can they find you at? Well, they can follow me at Mike Royer Design on Twitter and Instagram, and you can read my web comics at pickledcomics.com. Chris, if people want to know what you're up to, where can they follow you? You can find me on Twitter at Valdan, V A L D A N. Uh, post pictures and stuff there. I'm trying to do Pop a Day. I have the king. I have two of the four Kingsman pops. I was trying to post those. Got to find the other two. Got to find Gazelle and, and Valentine. Uh, also, get up on that. Yeah, trying to, trying to, so hard. Uh, also, read stuff on comicui.com, listen to the other show, Filmside Chats, or go to DNN on YouTube and see the videos I put up there. Uh, if people want to know more about the show, this is a re- special review episode. If people want to know about Superhero Sites regular news, weekly news episodes, where can they find those at, Mike? Well, as always, the best place to go is SuperheroSlate.com. That is the best place to find all the avenues we host the show and also to check out our show notes. So if you're listening to one of our news episodes and we're talking about like a cool trailer or a cool image or something like that, you can just look at our show notes, click on some of those links, and you can get all that stuff right in your eye sockets. So you can find us on iTunes, YouTube, Google Play Music, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Tumblr. You can get us right in your email inbox every week. You can like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. We are out there. You can get a, a Superhero Slate t-shirt a mug a hoodie you can get all that at superhero slate.com slash store uh if you're a fan of the show uh please 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 consider leaving us a review i think that's even easier now in the new uh, ios 11 if you're listening to us on itunes you can just open up the app you can just kind of like scroll down onto our page and bam right there you can just give us stars and you can leave us a review we really love that really appreciate it and if you want to be a super fan of the show all you got to do is share the show with a friend share the show with a buddy and we will be here every week and like this week, sometimes twice a week, we're mm-hmm. giving you a, a review, and also uh, make sure you're subscribed, and you can uh, you can listen to our our, our news update segments uh, coming up next. Yes, so I guess we got to go cover the news, Mike, and and make up for me fucking up last week. So let's go ahead and get to that. We'll catch you guys there. All right, everybody, bye bye. Thanks for listening, and don't forget to subscribe. Hopefully, there won't be too many groans from my old man body over here.